l'humanité peut désormais continuer de rêver un avenir meilleur. L'altruisme et la générosité existeraient pour toujours. Des scientifiques de l'université hébraïque de Jérusalem ont récemment publié les résultats de leurs recherches démontrant l'existence d'une générosité génétiquement programmée. Selon eux, les personnes présentant une certaine inclinaison à l'entraide et à la générosité seraient dotées d'un gène spécifique facilitant l'apparition de tels comportements. InfoLife TV a rencontré l'équipe de chercheurs dans leur laboratoire à l'hôpital psychiatrique Herzog de Jérusalem où ils nous ont présenté leur projet, la méthodologie utilisée et leurs résultats. We're interested in how genes affect people's behavior, but not necessarily uh, abnormal behavior, but normal behavior. And one of the, one of the areas uh, that we became interested in uh, was generosity or altruism. Uh, and altruism itself is an interesting problem. Uh, humans, I think uh, most people would agree, uh, on the whole, we're an altruistic species. So we're willing to help uh, conspecifics, other members of our species, uh, which is Uh, somewhat unusual in the animal world, although there are there are other animals uh, that do that kind of behavior. 203 personnes ou sujets ont été recrutés pour participer aux recherches grâce à un jeu sur internet destiné à mesurer leur degré d'altruisme. Les résultats du jeu ont ensuite été comparés avec leur propre patrimoine génétique. And in that game, what, what it's very simple. We, I give you a certain amount of money, say 50 shekels, and you can either keep all that money or you can give some of the money away and it'll go to some other, say, student at the university, but you don't know anything about the student. You don't know if he needs the money, he doesn't need the money, you're never going to meet him. So the, if you tell people this game, most people just assume that everybody's going to keep all the money. Cause, and that's what classical economics or in some sense, classical evolutionary theory predict, and kind of maximizing your profit. There's no reason to give anything away because you don't gain anything by that. It turns out that that's, that's not the case. That in fact, not only in Israel, but in America and Europe and other countries where they've played that game, uh, people give a certain amount away, and only maybe 20% of the people keep all the money for themselves. In the study that we did, we actually had a uh, a priori hypothesis. We, we had a a notion which gene we should look at. So we didn't just uh, pick randomly one of the 30,000 genes. As I said, we picked a gene which we thought might be related to this kind of generosity. And there are techniques today we could see in our laboratory that you can take DNA. We actually, the students uh, do a mouthwash. They uh, take some uh, mouthwash and roll it around in their mouths. They spit it out. And from that mouthwash, we extract DNA. And then we can take a specific area of the DNA where we know that gene is and we can amplify it, we can generate a lot more DNA of that specific gene. And we can measure, we have a machine that essentially measures the size of the DNA fragment that we've made. So we can group people uh, on how long that particular area of the DNA is. The, we were fortunate that it was really a, a uh, multidisciplinary effort and we had a lot of uh, Could help. We had Professor Epstein, who uh, who, who led the uh, the genetic element. Uh, uh, Professor Gary Bornstein, who uh, came from from the behavioral economic perspective, and uh, and Ariel Knafo, Dr. Ariel Knafo, who who has the psychology and, and the, the the twin studies. Uh, on top of that, we had a lot of people help with the recruiting of the game. Uh, they did the genotyping, uh, the DNA extraction. Um, so it, there was really uh, and and you could see in the in the article itself. We have something like 12 or 13 authors. In addition to that, uh, there was a group that, uh, um, from uh, led by Professor Chaim Belmaker uh, and uh, Galila Gam, that provided uh, 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 brain pieces that we were able to look at to uh, look at the actual amount of uh, mRNA uh, that is produced, uh, that, that's expressed in, uh, these, in, in brain regions for the same gene. So it was really a, a multidisciplinary effort, and we were very fortunate in that perspective. On the game side, we had 203 participants. Uh, the, the important thing in a, in a genetic experiment is to get, a, to get a high enough number of subjects, especially with, with the gene that we picked, because uh, there's a lot of different alleles. There's a lot of different uh, variations for this specific gene. So we wanted to make sure that the subject size was large enough that we can detect uh, statistically la question qui vient naturellement et immédiatement à l'esprit est de tenter de comprendre la part d'inné et la part d'acquis dans le comportement humain, dans ce cas présent par rapport à la générosité. Les scientifiques nous ont expliqué leur approche. Nous savons que les genes uh, only explain part 
of the reason we're altruistic or generous. So although we're, we're as a species, uh, to some extent, we're hardwired to be generous, the genes only explain 50% of the reason, the differences between people. And the other 50% comes from environment. So that might be uh, the society, education, your parents, or your friends as you grow up. This is not the gene for altruistic behavior. I, th I think that would be a misnomer. We found a gene uh, that, that uh, w when we get to things like uh, cooperative behavior and, and altruism, is made up of, 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 it's a very complex trait. Uh, and, and in that respect, it's important to, to identify that there are many genes that, that contribute to this behavior, as well as many uh, environmental aspects as well. So this is a, a, a head start I think going in the right direction, but it's not by no means the gene for Le professeur Epstein et son équipe travaillent actuellement sur un autre projet de recherche tentant de déterminer par exemple l'existence d'un lien entre la génétique et les comportements anorexiques. Altruisme, générosité ou égoïsme, le comportement humain demeurera encore et sûrement pendant de longues années une énigme indéchiffrable.